new sheets. Sheet pops up. Let's zoom in on it. Gray. So the basic layout of a chi-square would be on the far left, you write down whatever the trait is. So whatever you were observing. So I could talk about red eyes, brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, uh, yellow eyes. Yeah, that all sounds good. The next column will turn out to be what you observe. So what data you gathered. So this column here, like I said, is these are the data you gathered. Because that's the point of all that stuff. I want format wrap the text. And I observed 14 of them, 15 of them, 17 of them, 60 of them, and 19 of them, or 18 of them. The next column is what I expected to see. So I expected actually, so there's five, so I expected 20% of each. So I really expected each of these to be 20%. The catch is I counted 14, but I expected 20% to be red eyes, so I can't use this as is. The expected is a percentage that math says should be. So this isn't reality, this is what everything says the answer should be. Hi Mr. Fam. Oh, I'm recording a video. Huh? I am, I'm totally recording a video. For what? For AP Bio. So they're going to hear me having this entire conversation with you. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, yeah. guys. I'm showing them how to do a chi-square on a spreadsheet. Don't be an ABG. Love Mr. Fam. I thought you were doing chemistry because I was going to throw my kid in here. So you can oh, I'll do that as soon as I'm done with this. With her? Yeah, we did some balancing. Great. So this 20% is of the total. So if I know the total number of observations, 20% of them should be red eyes, 20% of them should be brown eyes, 20% should be blue eyes, 20% should be green, 20% should be yellow. So I could figure out the total if I ask for the sum from this point to this point. Uh, that's right, this, if for whatever reason doesn't like doing that. So by saying equal sum, equal means do math, sum means add them up, and it's going to add up all the cells within the parentheses. B2 is this cell, B and 2. Colon means go all the way, all the way to whatever number comes next, which is cell B6, which is why that highlights up. I get 124. Hooray. So I expect 20% of everything to be 120, or 20% of 124 to be red, 20% of 124 to be brown, 120, or 20% of 124 to be blue, so forth. So I can do a few things. I can either sit there on my calculator and figure this out every single time, or I could be a little crafty. I'm going to do the crafty version. I'm going to say equals, because I want to make it do some math. 20% is the same thing as 0.2. And I'm going to have it multiply by that cell. Except it's going to give me a percent, and I don't want that. Ah. There we go. So I'm going to ask this to give it to me as a number. So I want 0.2 times that cell equals 0.2 times that number, and I can keep doing that. I only have five of them, so that's not too bad. But if I wanted to be a little bit lazier and a little bit smarter, I could say equal sign 0.2 times this cell, except I want to say only look at this cell. The way I can lock that in is I could say it has to be column B, and it must be cell 7. If I do that, I get the same answer, except now what I can do is I can just click and drag, and hooray and hip hip. My next one is my observed minus my expected, and I'm going to do observed minus expected squared, then I observe minus the expected squared divided by expected. So how can I do that? Equal sign, observed, minus, expected, hooray. The nice part is, if I click and drag, it will do all the math for me. The reason why is, if you look at the cell, it says B2 and C2. 
it's only looking in this row. If I click on the next one, it says B3 and C3. It says B4, C4, B5, C5, B6, C6. These cells are going to match the pattern I put into the first cell. So if I wanted to make that a little different and I wanted to lock this one, I would get totally different outcomes. At least I should. Oh, but since they're all the same, that part won't matter. Let me make it so it's actually going to matter. So if I did that, so it's only going to look at B2, all these turn out to be the same, which is not what I wanted. I want it always just to compare back and forth. So if I get rid of the dollar signs, hooray. Observe minus expected squared. I want to do an equal sign. That up caret 2 means square it. Hooray. Click, grab on that bottom corner, drag down, hurrah. So I get big numbers. I'm going to do this number divided by my expected. So I divide by that number equals that, drop down. I have a whole bunch of numbers. I can then say sum it up. I'll be from F2 all the way out to F6. And I get what we call a chi-square value, which is 62.8. What we're going to do with that, we'll talk about in class, but that's how I turned data with some expected values into a chi-square. I have already figured out my chi-square value just by plugging things in. And if you realize, oh shoot, I wrote 60, I meant to say 16. So I changed the 6D to 16, and it automatically changes all of the math. So, oh no, actually it was 60 again. And it'll just automatically readjust. So, hooray and a hip hip. It actually turns out to be rather nice. And we will use this in class.